Rights groups and the international community are raising alarm over the human rights situation in Uganda, raising attention to what they call recurring credible accounts of arbitrary arrests, forced disappearances and torture in the East African country. They're blaming the government of President Yoweri Museveni, who's been in power since 1986. Now there's outrage after writer Kakwenza Rukera Bishaija alleged he was tortured for weeks while in detention after being arrested in December. A magistrate ordered his release last month. He has since published images of his back on social media, showing clear signs of alleged torture. Well, Kakura Rukira Bashaija has now fled Uganda. Human Rights Watch is demanding that Uganda should drop all charges against him and investigate his allegations. The satirist's most recent book is Banana Republic, where writing is treasonous. And then he's also the author of the 2020 satirical novel, which is The Greedy Barbarian, which describes a high-level corruption in a fictional country. Now, before Rukira Bashaija fled, I spoke to him in Kampala, and I first asked him to describe what happened to him when he was detained last year. Now, on uh, 28th December, I was home, and military men broke into it and violently arrested me without any arrest warrant and took me to uh, Special Forces Command uh, the, the, the military, the army that is responsible for the president's um, security and his immediate relatives. And I was detained there for 14 days. And during the detention, uh, they tortured me to almost death and inflicted grievous uh, damage to my skin, my body. And I was later smuggled into court and uh, sent to prison, uh, which is actually uh, a miscarriage of justice, as our laws uh, elucidate. Because when a person is tortured, as per our uh, our uh, Human Rights Act, uh, when the magistrate or the judge presiding over the matter realizes that the uh, suspect is tortured, he cannot send him to the hospital, I mean to the prison. Instead, he sends him to the uh, uh, hospital. But the magistrate decided to send me to prison. And uh, even when I was bailed, when I was bailed, they, they came and rearrested me from the prison and took me again to the military detention. Do you have any suspicions about who may have ordered these acts? Of course, it is the president's son, uh, Mohoz Kainerugawa. He's the one who ordered for my arrest. He's the one who presided over my torture. Yes. Uh, and I have met him three times during the interrogation. Yes, so he's the one who was in charge of my torture. When you mentioned the alleged torture, can you give us a little bit more detail about what happened to you? Uh, I received punches in the stomach when they were arresting me. Uh, they beat me, they hit my ankles using buttons, bludgeons, when they took me to the interrogation center, in the detention center. They used uh, hippopotamus whips or wires to inflict uh, dermatological lacerations all over my body. That is, uh, uh, the medical report says they hit my back. Uh, all my body is full of scars. Yeah, so uh, they really hit me bad to the extent that I, I collapsed and uh, gained consciousness after like six hours. Was the president's son president to... during this torture? Yes, he was. You physically saw him there in the same room? Yes, I saw him, I met him, he asked me to give me an offer and, uh, of a job, in, in form of a job and some other material benefits I refused. He begged me not to write about my torture again because he knows that uh, even after this arrest I am going to write another book. So he begged me even when uh, I was taken, when I was kidnapped from prison, it was kind of caution. He met me again and uh, told me not to write. And he said, let me first heal. I will think about it.
So you've been warned that not was... to speak to the press, yet you've decided to give interviews to the media anyway um, before your trial concludes in March. Are you worried that speaking out could lead to you being arrested again? Do you fear for your life? They know where I, they know where I stay. If they want to arrest me, they will come back and arrest me. I don't care. And have you been able to receive treatment uh, after you were brutally beaten? We saw some pictures that you had published on social media um, with the bruises on your back. No, I've not received any medical attention. I went to the hospital. They did a diagnosis. They did uh, everything, and I was referred to Germany. But uh, my court was uh, my passport was deposited into court as one of the conditions for bail. Uh, 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 yesterday, but one, we put in an application to get my passport back so that I can travel to Germany. Uh, and a magistrate who is uh, a b of Museveni refused to give me back my passport. So I think he wants to try a corpse. He wants me dead. And yeah, that is their, that is what they want. They want me dead. They don't want me to go and get medical treatment. They are sending me to the death drops here in Uganda, of which they cannot even manage my condition. So I, that is why I am determined to speak against my torture. If they want to arrest me again, let them arrest me again and they get ashamed. This isn't the first time you were arrested and detained. This also happened back in 2020, where you described the situation as inhu inhumane and degrading. Where does this leave the, the future of satire and freedom of expression in Uganda? I believe that uh, the, the president, who is in the State House, actually, uh, illegitimately, he will not live forever. So even if uh, he actually touched the wrong button. You cannot, there is no leader in world history who has ever won a battle against uh, writers. You, that is on record. So I actually pity him if he thinks that he will outlive uh, art satire. He will not live forever. He will not live to keep frustrating uh, art, you know, writing. He will never. Going forward now, what do you think needs to be done to ensure that there is more accountability? Of course, the president has to go. Museven must go. It's the sole problem we have as a country. Him and his son, now the son wants, he thinks that the presidency is a, a kind of a hereditament. He wants to inherit his father's barbarism. So we have to send them off, all of them. Kakwenza Rukira Bashaija, Ugandan writer, thank you very much for your testimony and speaking to DW News Africa. Thank you so much for hosting me. So Rukira Bashaija alleges torture and attempted bribery by General Kaine Rugaba. The satirist had in the past referred to the Ugandan president's son as pig-headed and plump. For his part, the general denies any claims of torture and says he has never met the writer. On Twitter, he wrote, I don't know who this young boy is whom they say was beaten. I never heard of him. I've never met him or talked to him. Now, DW News Africa also reached out to the Ugandan authorities about these allegations of arrest and torture. Here's part of the response from the government spokesperson, Ofwondo Opondo. For now, the government has no evidence and the government cannot operate on hearsay because suspects can allege anything. Yes, we have seen that before. Somebody could have had pre-existing condition. What we can say is that Torture is illegal, according to the Uganda Constitution, according to the Human Rights Commission Act, according to the anti-torture law. Ugandans should have a right, first of all, to criticize government and to criticize government officials, including the president. The government sees no problem whatsoever. Because we are in a democracy, we are in a democracy with free speech, free intellectual discourse, and giving divergent points of view, as long as you don't impose. It is up to the individuals to choose to use the language of decorum or insulting. 
How about a policeman? How about a soldier? Who perhaps is a semi-educated, doesn't know the law. He may be carried away by emotion, by anger. He has pursued a criminal, a suspected criminal, and he thinks this person has wasted their time. It is understandable if this kind of policeman arrests this person and goes overboard. Even when it is not official policy, it is understandable. In me, I would appreciate the anger of that policeman, the anger of that security officer.